seen in 2016 for both the central banks and the precious metal uh, cartel. This uh, scheme that has been suppressing the metals, but right now we're seeing an overwhelming physical demand. We're going to get into all of that. Um, I know everybody probably wants to hear Andy Hoffman talk about his thoughts on uh, gender neutral bathrooms, but we're going to go ahead and get straight into gold and silver. <laughs> Andy, thank you for joining us. Are there really gender neutral bathrooms? <laughs> it's a big debate, I guess, on social networking sites in the news. But uh, also, before I start, everybody, please, May 20th. May 20th in Houston, and there will also be a, a, a webinar at the same time that you can see uh, live, but May 20th, I will be in Houston, Andy will be in Houston, uh, Andy Sheckman of Miles Franklin, who's been in the bullying industry, my goodness, probably since I was in elementary school, he's going to be in Houston, and um, we're all going to have an, an amazing evening about uh, 6 o'clock, 6.30 in uh, local time in Houston. May 20th, if you want more information, please register by emailing ahoffman at milesfranklin.com. That's ahoffman at milesfranklin.com. I want to meet everybody there. Andy's going to be there answering uh, questions. Uh, it's just going to be an amazing night full of like-minded individuals discussing the economy. I can't imagine how much everybody's going to learn, including Andy and I, uh, because every time you talk to people, I mean, it's it's the old proverbs, iron sharpens iron. So I hope to see everybody there again, A. Hoffman at Miles Franklin. All right, Andy, let's get right into this. Silver last week had a breakout. Uh, what snapped? Well, let's see. I just wrote this weekend, it'll be published uh, within hours, it's called Silver 2016, The Cartel's Last Stand. And uh, ironically, it's coming, as, uh, as our friend Vic Swear just pointed out, within uh, days of the uh, five-year anniversary of the Sunday Night Paper Silver Massacre on May 1st, uh, 2011. Uh, which, by the way, was only a few months after the last uh, PSLV silver bullion uh, deal uh, offering by Sprott, which was, uh, in my mind, one of the big catalysts that pushed silver up from $24 to $50 an ounce uh, in early 2011. What is SNAP? Well, I think you and I have both known all along that when it comes to the cartel, it's more likely that silver is going to be what does them in. And I'm not saying that we're going to have this right now, but it's unquestionable that right now the tightness in the silver market is getting so powerful that the, that the cartel is being overwhelmed. Uh, and, you know, we've been pointing out all year the, the big difference that we haven't seen in several years, uh, three or four years to be exact, in the precious metal markets has been the lack of institutional demand. Now, we've seen the, the central banks continue to buy. Last year, 2015, was the most central banks ever publicly bought, and you know they bought more behind the scenes. And of course, on the retail sector, we've seen physical demand for silver in the retail sector go up every year, a new record in 2014, 15, uh, 13, 14, and 15. But what we're now seeing in the institutional market is that the big boys are joining as well. They know the bull market has started. That's why the mining shares are soaring. That's why the ETFs are seeing huge inflows, and that's why the uh, premiums on the closed-end bullion funds are going up as opposed to down where they were the last four years. What happened last week? Well, I don't know. I think it's just as Gata has said all along, the, the demand is starting to swamp the supply. And uh, that's why the COTs, a lot of people pay attention to the commercials, which is essentially the cartel, has built their biggest short position in history, in history right now, and in gold also, they're nearly at their biggest short position in history. And this is with Price is going up, up, up. And sorry to be rambling right now, but I've written several articles this year, the last one everyone should read, called About Those COTs, talking about the fact that people who are so focused on the COTs are not, are not seeing the forest through the trees. They are not realizing that in the past few years, we were in a bear market in precious metals. Yes, it was a cartel orchestrated one, but it was definitely a bear market. And now that we are in a bull market, which we've been in in all other currencies for the past 18 months, and now we are in the dollar price of gold and silver. There is nothing the cartel can do to stop the trend. All they can do is slow it. And that's why it's very likely that sometime very soon this giant demand from silver is going to cause major, major problems for the cartel. And I mean, look what happened last summer. We didn't even have a crisis. And last summer we had a major silver shortage. So. I think something very, very big is coming down the line in the physical precious metal markets. Perhaps it was the Shanghai fix. 
that just started last week that catalyzed all the new buying. Perhaps it was Deutsche Bank's admission that they had manipulated the gold and silver markets for 15 years. Perhaps it was, as I suspected it to be, the offering by Eric Sprott's PSLV fund on April 8th when silver was 1505 per ounce. That has gotten all the money coming into the sector. But either way, the cumulative forces of the physical market are now starting to swamp those of the paper manipulators. You know, Andy, um, the, the case and the catalyst right now for increasing demand, as we're already seeing, you know, really record uh, physical demand, uh, we could talk about it for over an hour. And I look at the supply and we often talk about how the, you know, 80% of silver comes from non-silver producing mines, where there's zinc mines or copper mines or even gold mines. and I, I, you know, I did a recent documentary a few weeks ago, and in the research we did, we looked at the actual primary silver producers. And I don't think people fully appreciate that not only are the zinc and copper mines reducing production and some of them closing down because of the depression, which will further collapse the supply of silver, but then I looked at Pan American Silver, which everybody goes, that's a silver company. Yeah, but less than 50% of their revenues come from silver. And Hecla Mining, everybody thinks of that as a silver company. That company is like just barely over 40% of their income comes from, or revenues come from silver. Uh, First Majestic, which came out as the most primary silver producer, that was 69%. But, you know, in general, even when we talk about these primary silver producers, for the most part, like a Pan American Silver, they're producing base metals. So when you look at the supply, could we see an actual, and we talked about this last time or maybe two times ago, could we actually see a dramatic reduction in supply at the same point in time, let's say later this year, middle of 2017, at the same point in time, physical demand completely just explodes? Absolutely. I mean, everyone should go back. You should Google. I'm trying to remember the title. Uh, it's the, All -Star, the All-Star Silver Webinar Panel. Uh, Miles Franklin's All-Star Silver Webinar panel from October 2014. Uh, we had David Morgan, uh, Bill Holter, Harvey Oregon, Steve St. Angelo, and myself, and we talked about this very thing. And I've been saying for years now that we're going to see a massive drop in uh, precious metal production because the industry has been strangled of capital for so many years, 15 years of prices well below the cost of production, and certainly, more importantly, the cost of industry sustainability. It's not just enough to, to make money on mines that are in production. It's to have enough money to keep exploring and, and getting more reserves in a business where you're having rapid depletion. You have to go further. You have to go deeper and into more, um, more remote places to find things. And as a result, we've seen a dramatic drop off in reserves and we've seen a drop off in production. In fact, silver production actually declined last year by something like, I think, 8%. Or no, it's 5%, and they're expecting it'll drop another 10% this year. And gold production also peaked. In fact, Barrick Gold, the largest uh, gold miner in the world, is expected, if you could believe this, to have a 25 to 30% drop in production over the next four or five years. Newmont Mining also, number two, Anglo Gold, drops in production. And it's because they haven't had capital and because it's harder and harder to find things. And in Silver's case, of course, it's not just the primary miners. It's, as you said, two-thirds of the silver comes from base metal mining, uh, particularly copper, link, uh, zinc, and lead. So you're going to see less production there because they are becoming uneconomic. And as soon as this uh, dead cat balance, which really hasn't been much of a balance in anything except for, except for oil, uh, which is, by the way, still down 65% from its highs, you're going to see even more mine closures and more drops in production. So I think... You know, when the cartel in their uh, not just the cartel, the powers that be in deforming the economy for 15 years, as David Stockman would call it, have oversupplied everything that we don't need, such as copper, lead and zinc and undersupplied what we do need, which is gold and silver. So, yes, I think the perfect storm of exploding demand, vanishing inventories, which is another part of the equation no one is talking about, pr pr uh, plunging production and, of course, exploding money printing. Andy, let's talk about the cartel. Uh, was this a major blow? I mean, there's so much manipulation uh, in our media and in everything they do. This this admission by Deutsche Bank that, yes, we have been manipulating the precious metals and we're even going to name others in this civil lawsuit. Uh, I mean, what are your thoughts on this? I mean, this this is this uh, just like 
part of the collapse of the cartel? I mean, are they starting to come apart at the seams here? Even, even like literally, like the cartel itself is turning on itself. Yes, yes. I mean, and it's funny you use the terms major blow because on uh, from my vacation in Cancun <laughs> two weeks ago, I wrote an article called "A Major Blow to the Cartel," but I was referring to the PSLV offering. Because in my mind, that offering, their IPO in, in uh, October 2010, was the main catalyst of pushing silver price up to $50 an ounce because it showed, it exposed just how tight the physical market is. And lo and behold, they did an offering April 8th that silver was 1505 an ounce. And look at that, on April 21st, it hit 1760 um, But you know, you're talking about the Deutsche Bank. That was before the Deutsche Bank announcement. I mean, the whole world now is aware of this that there's major manipulation. Not that, you know, everyone seems to forget that UBS uh, admitted to uh, manipulating the gold market two years ago. But then again, we were in a bear market two years ago, so no one cared. But now we're in a bull market, so everyone sees this. You throw in the Shanghai fix in there. And don't forget, you know, we go back to January 28th when we had that fraudulent silver fix. Remember that? The price was 1440, and they yeah. fixed it at 1385 or 1370. And only a couple of days later, Five of the largest miners on the London exchange resigned their seats and stopped trading there because they knew it was rigged. And then I wrote the next day, I wrote the, uh, I think the article was called The Biggest News in Gold Market History because I was saying, look, the miners aren't going to take this BS anymore, so they're going to have less people to fleece. And sure enough, three days later after that was when gold had that $60 up day, which is where the cartel has been, uh, you know, trying to cap gold since around twelve fifty dollars uh, fifty per ounce, and silver at sixteen, by the way, which they've now lost because now it's over seventeen dollars an ounce. So again, you've had a confluence of events, including, as you say, the cartel turning on each other. Everyone's turning on each other. Countries are turning on each other. Central banks are turning on each other. People are turning on each other because this is what happens in bad economic times and in the big scheme of things. But we're talking about the end game of history's largest, most destructive fiat Ponzi scheme. Uh, Andy, I want to have you back in about two weeks. I guess we'll talk more about the economy then. Uh, but just for everybody who is listening and wants more, uh, not only can they get your a daily blog, but uh, in June, June 24th, Chicago, they can meet you. May 20th in Houston, they can meet you. And what can they expect when they show up to these events? I know you just did one in Fort Lauderdale and Phoenix. Uh, in um, where's your home? Where's your home base again? Minneapolis. Minneapolis, there you go. And, uh, and Denver as well. So what can people expect when they arrive to these events? Just so everybody knows, they're, they're free events as well. Yes. Again, uh, we've had four of these so far. The one we had on, um, on last Thursday in Fort Lauderdale was, uh, was the biggest one yet because uh, we had a webinar that was with it. So 200 people attended and 500 listened to it. And uh, that one was hosted by Kerry Lutz. The one in Houston will be hosted by you, and we're looking forward to that. Basically, myself and Andy Sheckman, who's our president and co-founder, he's been doing this for 27 years, uh, we answer questions from the audience, and in that case, also on the Internet, uh, about the markets, the, uh, the economy, the gold and silver markets, and, of course, the retail bullion industry, which most people have not a clue about because it's one of the most uh, opaque businesses out there, but not when Andy Sheckman is talking about it. Uh, and, of course, you'll be able to add in your commentary. So it'll be a lot of fun. Unlike the other ones, this, will, uh, this one will not be webcast. So you're going to have to come. But, mm. the, the web, but the webcast of the Fort Lauderdale event is now up on YouTube. Great. Well, I look forward to seeing everybody there. Uh, please uh, email Andy at ahoffman at milesfranklin.com. We're going to have a wonderful night. And, uh, Andy, uh, let's definitely touch base in about two weeks. We'd love to... Um, you know, see if we can get more people to go because uh, I really want to see as many people as possible. I mean, I, I get to email these subscribers and chat with them over the phone occasionally, but man, I, I, noth there's nothing better than physically shaking somebody's hand and uh, basically talking about the economy and precious metals with uh, with uh, other like-minded individuals. So look forward to seeing you guys there. Yeah, it's a very empowering event, uh, especially because the uh, the winds of, of of change are now on our side. Uh, as I was saying beforehand, every event we've had, the price of gold and silver have been higher than the last. And I fully expect that to be the case come May 20th. Well, let's let's make a one-ounce silver bet right now. I'm, I'm, I think silver is going to be at 18 on May 20th. What do you think? 
Um, I'll go eighteen oh one. Like we're playing prices right. All right, all right. Yeah, you, you locked, you boxed me in now. So, all right. Well, hey, have a wonderful weekend, and we'll talk to you very soon. Again, everybody, May twentieth. Not realizing that in the past few years we were in a bear market in precious metals. Yes, it was a cartel orchestrated one, but it was definitely a bear market. And now that we are in a bull market which we've been in in all other currencies for the past 18 months, and now we are in the dollar price of gold and silver, there is nothing the cartel can do to stop the trend. All they can do is slow it. And that's why it's very likely that sometime very soon this giant demand from silver is going to cause major, major problems for the cartel. And I mean, look what happened last summer. We didn't even have a crisis. And last summer we had a major silver shortage. So. I think something very, very big is coming down the line in the physical precious metal markets. Perhaps it was the Shanghai fix that just started last week that catalyzed all the new buying. Perhaps it was Deutsche Bank's admission that they had manipulated the gold and silver markets for 15 years. Perhaps it was, as I expected it to be, the offering by Eric Sprott's PSLV fund on April 8th when silver was 15.05 per ounce. That has gotten all the money coming into the sector. But either way, the Houston and... Um we're all going to have an, an amazing evening about uh, 6 o'clock, 6.30 in uh, local time in Houston, May 20th. If you want more information, please register by emailing a Hoffman at milesfranklin.com. That's a Hoffman at milesfranklin.com. I want to meet everybody there. Andy's going to be there answering uh, questions. Uh, it's just going to be an amazing night full of like-minded individuals discussing the economy. I can't imagine how much everybody's going to learn, including Andy and I, uh, because every time you talk to people, I mean, it's it's the old proverbs, iron sharpens iron. So I hope to see everybody there again, A. Hoffman at Miles Franklin. All right, Andy, let's get right into this. Silver last week had a breakout. Uh, what snapped? Well, let's see. I just wrote this week, and it'll be published uh, within hours. It's called Silver 2016, The Cartel's Last Stand. And uh, ironically, it's coming, as, uh, as our friend Vic Swear just pointed out, within uh, days of the uh, five-year anniversary. ...seen in 2016 for both the central banks and the precious metal uh, cartel, this uh, scheme that has been suppressing the metals. But right now we're seeing an overwhelming physical demand. We're going to get into all of that. Um, I know everybody probably wants to hear Andy Hoffman talk about his thoughts on uh, gender-neutral bathrooms, but we're going to go ahead and get straight into gold and silver. <laughs> Andy, thank you for joining us. Are there really gender neutral bathrooms? <laughs> it's a big debate, I guess, on social networking sites in the news. But uh, also, before I start, everybody, please, May 20th, May 20th in Houston, and there will also be a, a, a webinar at the same time that you can see uh, live. But May 20th, I will be in Houston, Andy will be in Houston. Uh, Andy Sheckman of Miles Franklin, who's been in the bullying industry, my goodness, probably since I was in elementary school, he's going to be in Of the Sunday Night Paper Silver Massacre on May 1st, uh, 2011, uh, which, by the way, was only a few months after the last uh, PSLV silver bullying uh, deal uh, offering by Sprott, which was, uh, in my mind, one of the big catalysts that pushed silver up from $24 to $50 an ounce uh, in early 2011. What is SNAP? Well, I think you and I have both known all along that when it comes to the cartel, it's more likely that silver is going to be what does them in. And I'm not saying that we're going to have this right now, but it's unquestionable that right now the tightness in the silver market is getting so powerful that the, that the cartel is being overwhelmed. Uh, and, you know, we've been pointing out all year the, the big difference that we haven't seen in several years, uh, three or four years to be exact, in the precious metal markets has been the lack of institutional demand. Now we've seen that the central banks continue to buy. Last year, 2015, was the most central banks ever publicly bought, and you know they bought more behind the scenes. And of course, on the retail sector, we've seen physical demand for silver in the retail sector go up every year, a new record in 2014, 15, uh, 13, 14, and 15. But what we're now seeing in the institutional market is that the big boys are joining as well. They know the bull market has started. That's why the mining shares are soaring. That's why the ETFs are seeing huge inflows. And that's why the uh, premiums on the closed-end bullion funds are going up. 
as opposed to down where they were the last four years. What happened last week? Well, I don't know. I think it's just as Gata has said all along, the, the demand is starting to swamp the supply. And uh, that's why the COTs, a lot of people pay attention to the commercials, which is essentially the cartel, has built their biggest short position in history, in history right now, and in gold also. They're nearly at their biggest short position in history. And this is with prices going up, up, up. And sorry to be rambling right now, but I've written several articles this year, the last one everyone should read, called About Those COTs, talking about the fact that people who are so focused on the COTs are not, are not seeing the forest through the trees. 